Welcome to Hi-Fi Turtle, the number one reptile adjacent Hi-Fi page on the internet, bringing the audio file out of their shell. Today, I am talking about my new reference amplifier. This is the SPL M1000. And as you may have been able to deduce from the name, the M stands for monoblock amplifier. Well, mono amplifier. And the 1000 means 1000 watts. 1000 watts into two ohms, 750 into four, and 420 watts into eight eight ohms. The Performer M1000 is part of SPL's professional fidelity line, which basically means the line made for audiophiles and consumers, because SPL is more traditionally known and the bigger part of their business is the side of the house that is aimed at professional audio. Any music that you're listening to, it is very, very likely that there is some portion of that that is produced or edited or mastered and mixed on SPL equipment. SPL is a German company and these amplifiers are made in Germany. They are 10,000 US dollars for the pair, $5,000 for each individual. I've been a huge fan of this line. Back in the day, way before this channel started, when I had my Focal Canta 2s, I strongly considered the SPL Performer S800 amplifier, but ended up going with a Hegel H20. Well, the Hegel H20 did persist through my Focal Sopra 2s and somewhat into my new now Diodeo Confidence 50s, but it has been replaced now at, by the SPL M1000 as my reference amplifier. And I know you're probably all wondering why I made that decision, but before we get into that, I wanna go over some of the more technical aspects and some of the things that makes this amp really special. So like I said earlier, this amplifier is capable of driving up to a thousand watts into two ohms, and that is super important. They have that high current availability and stability into two ohms. As I've talked about before with the Dyn Audio Confidence 50, it is a very, very punishing load, especially in those bass registers. So to have that stability and that availability of wattage is absolutely necessary for these kind of speakers. Despite all that available wattage, the M1000 really is not that heavy of an amplifier. It comes in just shy of 60 pounds per amplifier, and that's about the same weight as, well, the same weight when you think of just one, to the Hegel H20. And despite the 1375 volt amp toroidal transformer that is in each of these amplifiers, it is still able to slim down and be less than 60 pounds. This is from a very utilitarian and not flashy design, where you have a lot of amplifiers in the hi-fi space that are very flashy, have very large heat sinks, have a lot of embezzlement and things of that nature. The SPL really is a more utilitarian and more professional looking amplifier, if you will. It draws a lot of influence from SPL's line, again, from their professional audio experience versus trying to be a piece of audio jewelry, if you will. It uses the space that it has and it takes up as a premium and makes the amplifier as small, compact, and lightweight as physically possible. This is something that SPL kind of brags about as well with their amplifier only being about 11 inches wide where more traditional amplifiers may take up a full rack length of 19 inches. It still is a fairly large amplifier, don't get me wrong, but it is much more compact and small than its peers that are pumping out this kind of wattages and would almost make lead you to believe that instead of the class AB design that it is, that it may be some sort of class D design because of the size. Something that I believe SPL uses in their entire lineup of Professional Fidelity products is their Volt Air technology. And this is a special op amp design that where traditional op amps in the input stage of an amplifier, DAC, preamp, what have you, are only able to take a plus minus voltage variation of 15 volts, where the Volt Air design is able to take a plus minus 60 volts which brings it to a full range of 120 volts effectively. That's gonna bring darker backgrounds, lower distortion, overall, just less noise and more music. Another thing that SPL brings in from the professional side and brings into the protection circuit is not only just heat monitoring on the amplifier, but also clip monitoring. It looks for the signal to get too hot optically and adjust accordingly. This is a effective limiter that's built into the amplifier, something that is very commonly used on the professional side of audio. You don't see that very often on the hobbyist side of audio, but this is something SPL brings in as a protection to protect your speakers from clipping frequencies and also to 
limit those frequencies and not give you that clipping sound that you're gonna get from if it was just the raw signal without any kind of limit. Another feature this amplifier has is on the back there is a knob that has a resistive potentiometer where you're able to adjust the volume in 0.5 dB increments up to four and a half dB down on each channel so you can adjust for imperfections or incongruencies in your room and that's a really nice feature that these ampl this amplifier has in the analog domain. Another thing that I don't think I've seen in any other power amplifier is typically your power filtering capacitors, you're gonna have four, eight, 12, maybe a little bit more if it's a really high current amplifier. And the SPL is surely a very high current power amplifier. But there are two boards filled with capacitors that are, I think, believe they're 1,000 microfarads and there's 100,000 microfarads of filtering per channel. So there must be 100 of these capacitors in this amplifier. Yeah, there's a lot of capacitors. I have never seen it where there are so many small value capacitors. Now you may be wondering, why would they use so many small value capacitors and not just use 10 really large 10,000 microfarad capacitors? There's actually a few benefits that you get from using so many small value capacitors. The first being that because these capacitors are all running in parallel, they lower the ESR, they lower the parasitic resistance that occurs in the capacitor itself. So when you have a capacitor, it's not just having the value of the capacitance, there's also resistive values that are attributed to these discrete components. But when you put them all in parallel, it acts as like a parallel resistor and lowers that resistance across the board. So that ESR, that parasitic resistance that you don't want to have, it is lowered substantially by using so many discrete devices. Another advantage is because there's so many devices and the variance of those devices between each other, they're able to minimize the effect of ripple currents that occur in the electrical circuit. This will effectively lower distortion in the overall circuit as well. The M1000 comes in three different colors. It comes in SPL Signature Red, which is what I have. It also comes in a silver and black. But what I really like about the M1000, which gives it a little bit of a fun factor, is that it comes with three interchangeable color plates as well. So you get the main faceplate color, that's what you choose, that cannot be changed later on. But then you get the mini faceplate that can be changed whenever you want. So you can change it to silver, black, red, whatever your heart desires, whenever you desire. And you can do that for either amp, whatever, it's just fun. It's a nice little thing to have, be able to customize the look of your amplifier. Binding posts feel really substantial. The heat sinks internally are gigantic. There are fans in this amplifier. There are three fans on each side of the amplifier. And I, in all my time with this, I have never ever seen or heard the fans actually activate. They do give a little twitch every once in a while, which I'm not sure what that's all about, but they never actually activate, turn on, or actually going. I've never seen this amplifier get hot enough to actually engage the fans because the fans are not always on. They only engage when the amplifier reaches a certain temperature. And I just have not seen that. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty on the M1000. This is my reference amplifier after all, and it replaced my long-standing Hegel H20. Well, the Hegel H20 was still able to really drive the Confidence 50 to a good degree. I definitely felt like I wasn't getting everything that this speaker could deliver, and it needed just a little bit more, a little bit something that was more stable into those two ohms, had that real heft behind it in order to give these things the bump, the drive, the pistonic, ability that I knew they were capable of. And the H20 is a warmer amplifier. So when I had Focal, that was a great pairing. Moving to Dynaudio, which is a little warmer itself, it just became a little too syrupy for me. I needed something more neutral. And that's what the M1000 really gives me. It gives me absolute neutrality. It gives you a super clean presentation, nothing exaggerated, everything laid out, very, very nicely, extremely neutral with no exaggeration in the bass or the treble, and the mid-range is absolute clarity, so, so quiet. This is one of the only amplifiers that I've ever experienced where you can go up to the tweeter on the speaker, listen, and it's absolutely dead silent. It is oozing with resolution, with clarity, with dynamics, you may be under the impression that this kind of resolution and clarity can only be achieved by 
huge, heavy, hot class A designs, but no. In class AB, the SPL is able to output an extremely black background with high resolution, absolutely no distortion, a beautiful, wide and encompassing soundstage that is able to satisfy even the most discerning audiophile. The soundstage in depth is tremendous. It gives you a very concert hall-like experience for those more orchestral pieces, but also gives you a dimension and dynamics into poor recordings that you may not have ever experienced before. And given that optical limiter again, because it limits that clipping and analyzes the signal and adjusts it as so, you're able to really appreciate even poor recordings that may be like kind of gritty and hot on the top better because it does tune those down just a little bit not to get to that ear screeching levels. And it's able to do that all in the analog domain, which again, aids itself to that resolution, that clarity, that lack of distortion, that black background that it's able to bring out through really smart and professional audio engineering. This amplifier really does not have any color to it. I think it is a very close representation of that wire with gain that people say a perfect amplifier is. It it doesn't give you that ooey gooey laid back syrupy. It doesn't give you that overly analytical forward. It's a true neutral, a true high resolution, low distortion window into the music like you may have never heard before. Again, this amplifier is very utilitarian in looks. It is not flashy. It is not the most expensive amplifier out there. It doesn't have all the flashy buzzwords that a lot of amplifiers on the market today have in that extremely high and space but it what it does is it amplifies music and it does it extremely well i think a lot of very persnickety and snobby audiophiles look at this and say well that's not good enough for me i want that audio jewelry i want the buzzwords i want to be sold to i want to be able to impress my friends with all the things that are going on with this amplifier this amplifier is not that. This is something that is very professional, very neutral, and is impressive sound-wise. Not looks, not features, not anything else, sound only. And if that's what really matters to you, you should really check out SPL because again, I think they're a highly, highly underrated brand. And in fact, when I was at Exfona, I told one of the people I was talking to that you need to check out the SPL room because SPL is so underrated. He came back up to me after he listened to their room and he said, I'm ordering all SPL for my new reference system. And I think that's a good testament to how good these components really are. Th that's gonna do it for me. Again, I really like this amplifier. I bought it. I did not get this for review. I, SPL did not send this to me. I bought this. This is mine. I own it. I paid my hard money for this amplifier. And you know, if I buy something like that, you know it's gotta be good. And this thing is really freaking good. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, subscribe. Check out the links below in the description for other ways to help support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.